winner semis to get there. Uh, there was an upset early on that kind of allowed the bracket to go a little ham. Ed Boy defeating Dan 2-0 in, like, before quarters, I think. It was like the round before. And then Hydra eliminating Dan at nine. Yeah, Dan had a rough day. But right we are live here with these top four guys. We're going to have Palutena Game & Watch starting us out on Smashville, the smallest of the stages. Yeah, I don't think a good space trace here. I actually wonder how Archie's going to approach the Game & Watch matchup. I don't think he plays it too much, aside from the couple times he's fought Santi. That's a full bucket right there. Yeah, that is a quick full bucket. So we'll see if Josh King, well, he's just going <laughs> to throw it away. But if we see more explosive flames, that can easily get reloaded in a hurry. Yeah. Right away, 30 seconds in, we see a full bucket in the middle. Game one of a best of five sets. Yeah, both these characters have really good frame data, pretty solid combo games on early percentages, really good options for killing kind of at reasonable, like seven, 70 to 100 percent. So as you see the chair coming out right there after a bunch of the bacon. Yeah. A lot of ways for both these characters to kill each other. You get the breakfast, you didn't pay, now you get the chair. <laughs> right, Yumi with the stock lead, gonna see if he can pile on a little bit more as he gets back air there. Really good double jump back air there by Archie with the recognition, knowing that Yumi was gonna try to aggressively land. Yeah, I'm loving that down tilt approach. He's catching the standard get up with the up smash, evening the stock count, even game in the game one. Palutena is up smash with incredibly active frames. Yumi getting caught probably by the very tail end of that, but really good timing and precision by Archie to make sure that Yumi's not going to be able to do the neutral getup. We may see that come into play multiple times throughout this five-game set. Ooh, not the best punish option. I think he wanted forward tilt, actually, but the buffer, you know, sometimes can give you stronger inputs. Yeah, I think either way, though, Game & Watch very likely would have been able to shield. That character's frame that is uh, something to behold. Yeah, you saw it a lot when Meister was at the Nightmare and Smash like Charlie the King giving them like 30 years of respect, which you have to. Yeah, you absolutely have to be very, very careful because Game & Watch is one of those characters that can just catch you. You'll think a lot of times that you can punish a lot of his moves. You just can't. So you have to be just very, very cautious. On the bright side, not the heaviest character and floaty in just the right way that you can combo it if you can get in on the little two-dimensional menace. That's exactly what you like to see, and like here, a little back and forth, but this next stock is going to be a big deal, but the full bucket is going to do it, no? It's kind of weak, it's just a multi-hit that does like a little percent at a time. It's really the last hit, that's pretty devastating. Yeah, if he can bucket the last hit, that's a terrifying bucket, but it's no harm for Yumi to throw out the bucket to see what happens. Also no harm to throw out the bomb and take that stock, and Archie answers immediately. Yeah, one stock game here, I'd love to see this. That's when you know you're going to have a good set when you're able to reset just like that. You may be able to win the kind of little mini nair fight they had there at the low percents on this last stock here of game oh, one. Yeah, down smash, F smash. That's basically the equivalent of witch time if you get popped by that anytime past 45%. Oh yeah, 100% agree with that. No point in mashing. Just uh, think about your counter pick at that point. All right, so Yumi gonna go up 1-0 here with the down smash, F smash. Little confirm there from Game & Watch. A lot of those Game & Watch players kind of get to run through you whenever they can throw out the down smash if you have to play a ground-based game. Makes it a little bit trickier to play around the character. So, Archie gonna think about this now. If he wants to stay characters, if he wants what stage he wants to go. A lot of little nuances in the Game & Watch matchup, so you have to kind of know what's best for the character and what's not. And side platforms, stages like Kalos and Town, are not only FD stages, so Game Watch can't really combo you off platforms, but you also have multiple recovery options, which is critical against Game of Watch. And both these players eliminated me and Bracket today. I did notice that they started on Smashville, and when I played against Yumi, he did offer the stage strike. So I guess I said it's a suggestion, which is an incredible suggestion to do against Palutena, that Palutena thrives on Stadium. But I think the Town and City was the final choice, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, excellent stage choice from Archie. Yeah, definitely the right call, gonna have a little bit more escape options, as long as Archie can stay out of getting comboed early, and he can get combos of his own with Palutena, as we see there early, but here we go, Nair into up airs, Yumi gonna chase and get the falling there. You hey, that reflect too. We're only 20 seconds in, this is already a pretty big slobber knocker, any one of those hard reads hits early on, you're looking at a 20 second stop. And that's pretty much a testament to Gaming Watch because he's got that frame data to just put out the hitboxes. So, uh, but the priority that Palutena has to offer is a pretty good counter. Yeah, very interesting matchup. But I think Archie honestly has to work a little bit harder in the aerial neutral than Gaming Watch likely does, but can get possibly even bigger rewards than Gaming Watch can. So we'll see what Archie can bring to the table here as he evens this set out. I'm sorry, the stock out. I like these uh, early back rows from Archie just to apply a ledge trap. I love the falling down air. I know it traded, and that's just kind of a Game & Watch thing, but that was a really good read on his part to kind of know that 
Josh King was going to chill there on the ground, try to have the full-on stage choice, but that bomb, multiple bomb throws on Josh King's part, and finally one of them connects on the platform, taking the first stop. And a little bit earlier, we saw the key actually hitting Archie at the top, but not KOing him, the counterpick saving him. Ooh, that five looked like a nine for a second. It's terrifying whenever the gamer watches down throw you and you see the hammer start to come out. There's that little brief moment of terror before you see what the number actually is. But that back throw is going to take the stock this time. Yeah. 150% on a character with one missing dimension. That's going to do it. Falling neutral air, but not really able to get anything out of it as Town and City morphs back into the triple platform at what's kind of an unfortunate time for Archie. If he had that platform a moment before, he might have been able to get a considerable amount more percentage. Right here, chipping away back and forth. Oh, can we catch it? Oh, very, very close. Josh King getting the buffer dare out there, which is something he needed to do to live because Palutena maybe one to two frames earlier. That up air comes out. That's a very early stock. Yeah, that's such a big risk for both players. Archie Kant trying to go really, really deep. Very difficult to contest Gamer Watch's up B with all of the intangibility and the quickness of it. I believe only coming out of frame two or three. A lot of things will beat up at Game & Watch Fair, but you didn't really put out a hitbox there. Well, the bomb is interesting because it won't blow up on contact with you. It only blows up if it hits the ground or if it hits the, like, max distance that it can go. So you can actually jump through it and kick Game & Watch right in the face when he's airborne if you read the fair attempt. Staying alive, though, from that forward, so Archie with a slight lead, but he's got to make more out of it. He's trapped on ledge, but he gets out of it with the Nair into up air. Neat little combo, getting 21% in his favor off the ledge. Very, very good in that situation. And that's a big deal against Game & Watch, 21%. Every little bit helps against this menace. Yeah, there we go, anti-airing the landing. Up till beating out down air cleanly, something that Archie can keep in the back pocket for the rest of the set, because that is really, really good if you can get Game & Watch directly above you. But he's gonna want to get more credit for sure, because he does not want to give Josh King or Yumi a 2-0 lead in the set. All right, 55% is what he's going to have to work with. Oh. But he gets the grab right off of the invincibility, but it gets reversed by Yumi, who's immediately going to basically even this game out. Yeah, he's going to regret going for the air dodge read. Archie looking for the F tilt. I think he threw that out the wrong way. Yumi not jumping all the way through. Archie with a little bit of stage control here, and he gets the down throw back air. Not quite gonna do it, just a few percent too low. Is he gonna gamble? Didn't even gamble the down air, but just landed. That was a really good catch, because he stayed grounded for the last couple of interactions before that, and made, it, made him think that ever since they had that really high risk interaction early on in the game, that he wasn't gonna jump up and challenge him, and then finally he saved it for just the right moment, the quick jump immediate up air. Catches Yumi, takes the game. Now we're going to have a game three. These two even at one, so essentially we're going to have a best of three here. Yep. Uh, Josh King's counter pick. We'll see what's going to be. Well, I have to imagine that both of these characters get a lot of mileage off of similar stages, so that while this stage is also very good for Game & Watch, Palutena does have the capability to get Nair combos just the same as Game & Watch does, so we'll see which one of them can find what they want to find first. And Archie is definitely a strong player when he gets the teleport cancel on Battlefield. And I'm sure he likes this stage as well, knowing that it's a very good Palutena stage. Falling there, punishing that whiffed grab. You'd be playing a more grounded game than I would honestly expect to see against Palutena, given the ability that Game & Watch has with its aerial uh, options. Look at that, the weak moves. Yeah, Bucket gonna get a little bit of damage on there. Free to throw out, but still gonna be something. And it gets you that very rare, rare blue cinematic that comes up on really strong hits. Yeah, that really only comes up on my like Game Watch bucket, Nestor Lucas hitting you with their own up B, really random stuff. Shield break again and up to cloud finishing touch. Yeah, I like that. Falling back are gonna is there a weak hit on that back air? Uh ooh. I don't know, but it beats everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just felt like Game Watch would have flown farther at that percent. I guess not. Might have a late hit, maybe. Oh, that's real. Ooh, what? Well, way too low. I think he buffered a move he didn't mean to buffer. Just stock one, and there we go, two-stock game. Back door. Here we are. There's that forward tilt you were talking about last game that he was hunting for. Hits it there. Really good catch on the platform, making Yumi think that he wasn't going to be able to reach him from that distance, but that forward tilt actually covers a lot of horizontal ground. Pressuring the platform is Archie looking for an opening. 
Archie back airing the shield. Yumi punishing it. One of the few characters with fast enough frame data to actually punish a Palutena back air on shield. Yeah, Archie getting the ledge, getting a little bit of percent, but he needs to do a lot more off the screen right here. Gets the platform extension. Oh, oh I see that. <laughs> that uh, Gaming Watch was dead there. Earl standing to the side, kind of chuckling, because he knew that as soon as Archie went up on that delay to go for it, that that key was going to punish him in the worst way. And that's kind of the life of playing against Game & Watch when you try to go chase on these smaller stages. It can backfire in a hurry, and now Archie is going to have to climb a little bit more uphill than was originally planned, as Yumi laps him by 0.1%. Oh, that's it. Yep. There's that uh, watch time again with the down smash into F smash. I want to copyright that. Yeah. <laughs> Watch time. Two one advantage for Yumi, and there's one game away from advancing the losers' finals. Where he'll play Sayuki for the first time in this bracket. Well, now Archie's going to get the counter pick right back in his favor, seeing that while triplats can be beneficial to both characters, Yumi was very good at abusing the smaller blast zones of Yoshi's story. Had a couple good conversions on those platforms, and obviously that down air that killed super early, way at the top of the blast zone, going really far in his favor when Archie decided to chase. And he's also using those ledges to his advantage when he was actually not really snapping ledge, but instead rising with an air to kind of uh, have Archie back off. So I, I'm going to guess that he got rid of uh, PS2, and then because of the full uh, DSR, he's not able to go back to town. So he's kind of calculating what he wants to do. Maybe FD or Kalos, maybe run into a different triplet, unless it was banned. He was definitely hovering over Kalos for a moment there. Then he hovered over Woohoo Island, which I totally would have been fine with, but isn't, unfortunately, going to happen. Legalize Woohoo. And there is the Kalos pick. You gotta wonder if he's gonna stick with the Palatina or if he's gonna opt for Villager. He did use Villager in his last set before this, so... Just uh, smash uh, for Wii U main. I really would not recommend Villager. Villager Game & Watch is atrocious on the Villager side. Game & Watch just beats all of the options that you have. It's it's really, really rough. He does have that rough luck, yeah, so very beneficial. So you're gonna stick to the Palatina pick. Very smart. Yeah, definitely sticking out the Palatina. Good call from Archie. Having a villager in the pocket is great, but having a villager against the Game & Watch is just irritating. Panda knows better than anybody having to fight the plethora of Game & Watches that kind of plague our scene. And here we are going to Kalos Pokemon League for Archie's counter pick. Loving the fast stages to extend these combos, but Drop the combo and then it's up B out of there. Archie actually has been getting quite a bit more mileage off of the combos in terms of what you usually can get off Game & Watch than Yumi's actual conversions, which have been a little bit smaller, but Yumi's just been getting the really hard reads when he needs them. And that's what Archie's going to be looking to kind of turn around here and no platforms to really allow Yumi to find a way to start finding a way to continue combos. And he's going to want to escape this Game & Watch down fast pressure every time he's nearby. Just as I say, it doesn't get a good hit, though. Yeah, you got the, the weird, like, inner hit. It's almost like a Roy Hilt on the hammer that'll shoot you away. And Archie needed that because missing on the attempted up smash hard read the wrong direction, Yumi could have gotten a much harder punish than that, which honestly should have equated in a stop. And that move, like, there's a little bit of everything. It actually has a good hit that anti-airs and kills off the top, too. Like, <laughs> it does everything you want it to. Yeah, it anti-airs and it can two-frame, I believe, everything. It goes a little bit below the ledge as well. It just has an enormous hitbox. You see other Game & Watches in the scene like Nuck who have become very adept at getting the two-frame on those down smashes on ledge. But currently Josh King going to try all of the other options in the kit as he gets back air there. A little bit of difficulty coming off ledge and Archie going to take a little bit of a stock lead here on that counter pick as he barely survives that down. Yeah, the counter pick keeping him alive. The blast zones on here being very favorable for Palatina with no rage on the Game & Watch. Archie very wise to just kind of chase with the up air each time he hits one of those last hits of Nair. Not trying to chain too many Nairs together as Game & Watch would likely be able to up be out of that combo. Here we go, Game & Watch up air. It will no longer KO in this game until like 800%, so he's fine. <laughs> yeah, it just does not KO for a very long time. You'd, be have to, you'd have to try to die to that move. But Archie living at 206, which we've seen Game & Watch be able to seal out stocks at very early percents, but so if you can live to 200, that generally will bode well, but only 47% next to credit as you can stem the bleeding with that stock on back air. Game & Watch definitely very prominent in the early percent. Oh, and what's he going for? I think he was going for the bomb to get, like, shielded, and he was going to try to break the shield with all oh, the hard arrows. Ooh, good angle on that upbeat. Just getting over the down smash. 
And I'm not sure what Archie was going for there. Both these guys throwing out some really wild options on ground. I know he wanted an air dodge right there, which, I mean, it'll work early, in early bracket, but now we're in top four, so he's got to relax a little bit. Yeah, a lot of time Game & Watches, too. It's really hard to get oh. that aerial read on Game & Watches because they tend to like to up the out of anything that they think is scary. As Yumi going to hit the watch time combo, down smash into other smash attack. Yeah, and now we got Archie playing at a stock deficit. Needs to clear this up so he doesn't allow for Game & Watch to get the extra credit. Uh, wow, Archie really needed that stock to come through. It was a really good read off stage oh. with the forward air. The forward air not quite strong enough. Back air, though, just going to be enough to take the stock. Archie on his tournament life here, but still very much in this game. Last stock here, game four in loser seven. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to have to do a lot of chipping away. As late as Game & Watch is, he's got a lot of buttons he can push. Yeah, that was a really scary teleport cancel. Archie went a little bit farther than I think he meant to, and Yumi was ready for it with the jab. But getting a nice little combo there, couldn't Game & Watch up to 53. Oh, and he game. Tries to chase the down air coming out of nowhere. That down air has that little bit of delay before it shoots down. Archie going to die off the top, and Yumi going to take the set three games to one. Mm -hmm. Move himself onto losers' finals. Yeah, we got Yumi going through the HPT gauntlet, putting me in losers, eliminating Archie. Now going up against Sayuki, the Arcadian winner versus the Arcadian one seed. Yeah, Sayuki having...